Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com. On my YouTube channel, I previously tied a fly called the Lightning Bug. And in this one, we're gonna tie another one, but we're gonna call this one the Lightning Bug New and Improved. Stay tuned. Here's a sneak peek at the new and improved lightning bug. If you've watched my previous tutorial on this fly, you'll notice that there are definitely some changes, but in my mind, these changes upgrade the fly. We'll say they, they've kind of updated the pattern. So with that said, let's get a clean hook in this vise and start tying. Let's start tying this new and improved lightning bug. In my Sonfo Transformer vise, I have a Honic Competition hook. It's their H450BL. It's a size 14. The BL designation stands for barbless. What I love about jig hooks is that typically whenever they're running down the water, they will ride hook point up, which means you will have far less snags than traditional ones. So if you think back to my original lightning bug video, that's one obvious difference that you'll notice in this one. I have this paired with a slotted bead. It's a Hazard Fly Fishing 3.0 millimeter. It's tungsten and the color is silver. The first thing we're gonna do is add a little bit additional weight to it. We're gonna be adding some .010 wire. I'm just gonna go for around five or six turns. So I break it off and I'm gonna jam that really tight against that bead because I wanna make sure that that bead is in its proper position and you'll know it's proper whenever it's kind of up a little bit and you have a really significant gap, which is one of the main reasons why I like this Haunted Cook. Next, I'm gonna add some black uni thread. It's a dot. I'm just gonna hold onto this wire, wrap over it, again, snug it one more time, wrap back a little bit, make sure I jam that wire in position. At this point, I can get rid of my thread, and I can break off my wire. Now, if when you break off your wire, it doesn't come off perfectly and you have a little edge there, that's fine. You can just use that to build your taper a little bit more. Otherwise, we can next add in our tailing fibers. For the tail, this is going to be another difference. I'm gonna be using some Coke de Leon, the color's medium pardo. We want around five or six fibers, somewhere in there. If you have a couple extra or a few less, that's fine. I really am looking for the, that pardo that's really just speckled up really well, if that makes sense. You'll notice that some is very plain. I like that speckled Coke de Leon. This one is, is definitely speckled. For its length, I want it to be about the body. So I'm, if I look at the shank of the hook, that's about the, the distance that I want that, that tail going back. So I'm just gonna transfer it to my left hand, line it up accordingly. And after I just get a couple wraps, and I make sure it's on the top of the, the shank, I'm gonna make sure that it's that appropriate length. Once it is, I'll wrap back to kind of its ending point and then wrap back forward. Let's get rid of those butt fibers. And next, we're going to add in our ribbing. For the ribbing of this one, I'm going to go with the soft wire by Uni. The color is black and the size is small. This is going to contrast really nicely against the body. To lock this wire in, I basically want it butting up to where I tied off my wire for the weight. That way it's gonna help with the taper a little bit. And next we can add our body material. Now this is a neat body material that I'm using. In the original video I talked about the notion of finding some type of tinsel that you would use around Christmas time. And you can absolutely still go with that. I have since changed a little bit. I'm using this Uni Mylar now. If you look at it, it's size 12, which means it's a little bit wider. But if you look at the color closely, you'll notice it says gold slash silver. So what's really neat about this tinsel is that you can use it with either the tinsel being the silver side out or the gold side out. And I love to use both colors. In this video, I'm gonna go with the silver side out and I'm going to be pairing it with a silver bead. If I ever change and I go gold, then I'll use a gold bead as well. So I really just tend to vary that body based on the bead as well. So those are the two that I'll pair together. In this case, because it's going to be silver side out, I'm going to tie it right now so the gold is facing me. I'm just going to get a couple loose wraps in. And the silver's down. Once I'm sure I have it that way, I'm just going to wrap back to about where the barb would be. 
So whenever my thread's hanging there, I know I have everything correct. I'll wrap back forward. And now we just have two materials to bring forward. We first have our tinsel. And with your first turn, be careful with it because sometimes you'll notice whenever you pull it tight, it will kind of play with those uh, tail fibers a little bit. You can see it doing so with mine. So what I want to do is just kind of angle it forward and then down and continue it the rest of the way. I don't want my wraps necessarily touching. I want them just kind of going over the previous wrap. It's going to taper the body a little bit. It's going to build it up just a hair, but nothing that we're going to worry about. When I get up to the bead, we just need a couple wraps to lock it in place. And we'll snip it away. And then finally, we have this black ribbing. What I like about this color black is that it's going to contrast nicely against the body. Whenever I look back at the old video that I had for this fly, and a lot of the, the other flies that I would have in my fly box, I really use a lot of thin wires. And the thin wires work really well if you're just going for that subtle profile. But if I want that really contrasting look of the ribbing, I want to go for something that's a little bit more significant. So don't be afraid to try the medium size of this as well. And it, it looks thick, but you'll see it on your fly, and that's a really critical component of it. So make sure your ribbing is spaced accordingly. My tail fibers look fine. Next, once I have this locked in place, I can simply helicopter it away. And then we can add in our final material, which is going to be our thorax. We'll be tying this with the Simon Peacock dubbing. The color is Peacock Black. We do not need a lot of this. This is what it looks like. And I'm just going to grab just a really small piece of this. It's synthetic. It can be a little tricky to play with at first. We basically just want it to go around a couple times, and that's it. Look around. Everything looks fine to me. At this point, I can extend, do my initial whip finish. I might grab a little bit of Hanson's Hard as Nails, coat my thread with it, and one more whip finish just to make sure everything is locked in place securely. Once it is, I'm going to get rid of my thread and I'm going to clean up this fly just a little bit. In previous versions, I used to like having some of this material just kind of hanging out. Now I want it a little bit more flush because in my mind, these fish are attracted to this fly because of all the flash, not because of that buggy thorax. So now we have a finished look at the new and improved lightning bug. This is one that you will see in my box if you're running me on the water. Now, I also want to share some variations because in the original video that I did on this fly, I had some variations that I really loved and I turned to on a regular basis, and here's a few more. The first one is going to be this really neat looking one with a chartreuse body. The only change is the body material. It's the same material, it's uni mylar, but the color is that holographic chartreuse. Next one that I love, this is going to be very similar. It's almost the opposite of the one that you see in my vise. It still has that silver bee, but now I have a black body. Material again is uni mylar. The color is holographic black. Really cool one. I like to use this on a lot of my flies. And then finally, one that looks very similar, just slightly different, and you may not even notice it uh, on the camera. I can just see the difference in person. The body is silver, but it's a holographic silver. You may have seen this material before. It has a great look to it. Uh, if I was going between either that one or the gold silver, I would definitely go with the gold silver just because you have twice as many uses for it. You could use either one of those colors. So let me give you one more 360 of this new and improved lightning bug, and then we'll change the camera angle and talk a little bit more about this pattern. That is the new and improved lightning bug. Now let me tell you how this video came to be. On the Trout and Feather website, I have a page that's called My Most Popular Videos. And basically what I do is every month I kind of line up my YouTube analytics with that website and I kind of shift whatever videos have the most views all time. And I've noticed in the past year, year and a half, that my lightning bug video has been just steadily rising in the amount of views. That's a great thing. It tells me a ton of people are using that fly and they want to learn more about it. And it's a great fly. 
But whenever I went back and watched that video, there was nothing that I disagreed with that I said at all. However, it's not the fly that you'll find me using on a regular basis in my box. Hence, I want to just show you my update. So you'll notice that there are some changes in this one from that original one. For instance, the tail is no longer tied out of pheasant tail. I've updated it with Coke de Leon because it's a much more durable material. I can catch more fish with the fly and not worry about it breaking off. You probably also notice that it's tied on a jig hook and that's probably the biggest change that I've made because it's just a better style of hook. It really just fits with my fishing a little bit more than it used to. I love to fish, we'll say, tight line nymphing, contact nymphing, check nymphing, whatever you want to call it. It's a really effective style of fishing. And I use jig style hooks now. I didn't use them so much a few years ago, hence the reason for that change. Now, if we talk about the actual tying and we look at that fly, as I mentioned in the video, I really just like to go with either that silver or the gold flash body and then I pair the bead accordingly. There are so many other options that you have with beads out there, but I really try to keep it simple and I would recommend that you do the same too. However, you probably noticed that I did kind of show you some variations and there are some really other great color variations out there. So if you have any you'd like to share, I'd love to hear about them down below in the comment section or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Now let's kind of talk a little bit more about this pattern. For starters, what does it represent? And I'm not sure because whenever I look at this, it is just really flashy and I feel that whenever it's coming down the water, it's just a beacon for those trout and they really love it. So in my book, I consider this as an attractor nymph. There are people out there that say that it could possibly imitate certain in insects, but whenever it's being used, I don't believe we're using it in that style because I love to fish this in, we'll say a little bit faster currents, higher water, maybe even a little off color water. I know this is also a fly that gets used in fly fishing competitions all the time because again, it works really well. So with all that said, if you are still using that original version, keep using it. I know it's going to work for you, but I want you to see kind of a, a new and improved and updated version that has been working well for me over the last year or so as well. Now, if you want to go back and watch that first video, I'll put a link to it down below in the description. And I do hope that you enjoy the new and improved version. Well, with that said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to watch more like this, you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. If you're there, you can click on fly tying videos, nymphs, and then you'll see I have all kinds of different nymphs, and this one will be housed under the attractor patterns. You can also sign up for my email list. Just scroll to the bottom of the homepage and type your email there. You'll receive occasional updates regarding my videos, any news, and upcoming events. If you're into social media, you can find Trout and Feather also on Instagram and Facebook. As I mentioned before, if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them down below in the comment section or you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and I'll see all of you next time.